So first of all, I want to acknowledge that um, the series of projects I'm going to talk about um, have involved a large number of researchers. Um, and I'll, as we go through each of the projects, I'll, I'll be more specific, but uh, I'm delighted Linda is here. Um, so she can help me out with some of the questions related to the final project, which is what we're going to spend most of the time talking about. So I'm going to go through a bit of background, as I say, talk about our program of research in healthcare related to joint health and safety committees, talk about the three projects we've done, focusing on the third one, and a little bit about what's next, and certainly any input, suggestions um, from those of you who are here would be most w well received. So as you all know, joint health and safety committees um, are a key legal uh, requirement in the province. They are a key component of our internal responsibility system as a mechanism to allow workers to participate in occupational health and safety. When you actually look at the literature around joint health and safety committees or labor management committees, they have slightly different uh, names in different jurisdictions. There's actually not that much literature you'd expect given there um, the fact that a lot of jurisdictions have them. There would be actually a lot of work in the area, but there really isn't. Um, in the 1980s up till about 2000, uh, there were uh, several studies done. They were by and large looking at committees and comparing them to health and safety, um, basically statistics, so injury rates, things like that, and um, making a connection that often committees which um, seemed to be more effective were associated with lower injury rates. Um, in the next decade to now, there's been somewhat more critical research on efficacy and factors needed for successful committees, but the reality is the focus of most of the work has been on the manufacturing and industrial sectors. So when we come to healthcare, there's actually very little research done on joint committees in healthcare specifically. Um, as you will all remember from SARS, which is now over 10 years ago, um, but certainly affected us in very significant ways. Um, the Campbell Commission um, talked a lot about the internal responsibility system and joint health and safety committees. And um, the quote I'll use for today, which prompted this work, is hospital joint health and safety committees were sidelined. So basically, at the time of SARS, the view was that the committees, although they may have been there, were really um, not particularly effective and were certainly not engaged in a major way during that whole process. Annalie Yassi um, did a review, a systematic review around joint health and safety committees and focused on health care. That review was published in the American Journal of Industrial Medicine in 2013. And one of the things that she noted from the review was that the key to a successful committee is having clear guidelines on what is required for the committee to be effective. So CREOD was started in 2004, right around the time of SARS. And so as we were thinking with our advisory committee about what we needed to focus on, um, we had a very interesting discussion. And um, Jerry LeBlanc is on our committee. He represents the steelworkers, so very kind of industrial, mining-based union, although they cover a variety of sectors. And I will never forget Jerry saying, it's OK, this is a key issue, focus on health care. Um, so we did, and we decided we would look at joint health and safety committees. And this has led to a series of projects um, which started in 2006. Um, the first one really looked at roles, resources, structure, and function. We then started to move into effectiveness and impact. And then in the final study, <coughs> excuse me, have developed the audit tool. So as I say, there have been a number of investigators in these projects. There is a core group of us who have been involved in all, Catherine Nickel, uh, Irina Kudla, and myself. And we started the, um, the initial uh, project. Phase two, which was a qualitative study, involved Lorene Hayes and Vera Ninsek, who were both in the faculty of nursing at the time we did the study, but now actually are both in the research center at St. Mike's. And then finally, phase three, um, we had yet another group of investigators, Linda, uh, Chung Yip Hong from Ryerson, uh, Richard Balan, and um, our research associates, all from the uh, University Health Network, as well as Catherine, Irina, and myself. So the first study 
um, was really to understand the role, resources, structure, and function of joint committees in acute care hospitals in Ontario. It was a cross-sectional survey of worker and management uh, co-chairs for joint health and safety committees, and the survey was sent to all acute care hospitals in the province, and the results are reported in Healthcare Quarterly. We mailed out 378 surveys. We had 220 returned for a 58% response rate, 105 from management co-chairs, and 115 from the worker co-chairs. And we had completed pairs um, from 70, 73, so 39%. We had a lot of information, and the strengths um, of joint committees that we found from the survey was, first of all, actually compliance with the legal requirements was actually reported to be very high. These are things like we hold meetings, we have minutes, we have uh, co-chairs representing employers and workers. So on the very functional kind of minimum legal requirements, compliance was reported to be very high. And again, because we have the worker and manager co-chair, hopefully we were getting a fairly realistic um, perspective on what was actually happening in the committee. The other thing that was reported were there were a wide variety of resources and experts available to joint committees to assist them carrying out their responsibilities. And in Annalise's systematic review and other work, um, having expert resources uh, available to the committee is one of the factors that's associated with more effective committees, so that was also a strength. There were, however, some gaps in what was reported. So one centered around training and education for the committee and its members. So although the vast majority had completed hazard-specific certification training, just under one in five actually indicated that their committee members received at least some training every two years. So they'd had kind of some initial training, but kind of ongoing training and uh, more sophisticated training did not seem to be happening. And the other thing that was interesting um, on the kind of side of gaps was only 18% of the respondents thought that their committees had high status and visibility in the organization. So although they were there, they were doing what they were legally required to be doing, they didn't seem to be noticed particularly in the organization, and they weren't necessarily the go-to group um, that the organization, if there was an issue, would think of going to, other than complying with their legal requirements. So we were really interested in that issue of um, kind of lack of status and visibility. So that led us to the second phase um, of our work, which was to try to get a better understanding of the role and impact of the joint committees, and also to get from a variety of participants, participants their views about how effectiveness of committees should be managed. Because the reaction we got from the initial study was, well, that's nice that they're complying with all those legal requirements, but there's st something still missing. They're, somehow they're not being as effective as we think they should be. Um, we were um, obtained that information from both individuals inside hospitals and also external stakeholders. So we conducted uh, individual interviews and focus groups at three hospitals in the province, acute care hospitals, and then individual interviews with the external stakeholders. There were three hospitals of varying size. We interviewed in each of the three hospitals a board member, the CEO, the chief nursing officer or nursing executive, the physician leader, that might have been the chief medical officer or the um, chair of the medical advisory committee, and then we held 20 focus groups um, with a variety of staff ranging from program directors and management down to frontline nursing staff, environmental workers, dietary workers. We also had focus groups with their joint health and safety committees, their occupational health and safety staff, and their infection prevention and control staff, and allied health. So 20 focus groups with 120 participants. And then we interviewed eight external stakeholders um, representing the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Labor. We uh, interviewed individuals from three unions that um, are active in the healthcare sector, and then also did interviews with the Registered no Nursing Association of Ontario, the Ontario Hospital Association, and the Ontario Medical Association. So these groups had all been involved, obviously, during SARS, 
um, had continuing interests, and most of them had been very active post-SARS, so had, um, we hoped, um, both their, their own insights and also views around joint committees in hospitals what had happened since SARS, because at this point we're a good five at least years post SARS, so had things really changed because there was a huge effort within the system to try to um, kind of improve things in the hospitals. The Ministry of Labor, Labor created their health care unit. Um, hospitals were certainly being visited much more frequently from the ministry. Um, so there was a lot of activity going on in um, the health care sector, particularly hospitals. So very high level summary of the results. As far as awareness concerned, it was very clear that there were gaps in awareness and understanding of the joint committee. Um, some of our inter interviewees, um, in, and particularly in the focus groups, didn't know what the internal responsibility system was, um, were quite unclear about what the joint committee was, and knew very little about how to access it so there were clearly gaps, and I think it, what it pointed out to us was within a, lo a large organization, which most hospitals are, there's variation. So you'll have everything from people that are incredibly informed and knowledgeable to individuals who are very not so. Um, so it, again, kind of from a methodological perspective, is interesting about how do you actually sample a large organization. And there was equally a lack of clarity about who is actually responsible for health and safety. So this again goes back to some extent to the internal responsibility system and the understanding of responsibilities. And again, we got this consistent method messaging that although the participants by and large felt that the committee should have a vital role in their organization, there was pretty strong suggestions that their profiles were still low and that they weren't particularly visible. So that thread which we had captured on the original survey of the committee co-chairs follows through in this much broader group of individuals um, within the organizations. Facilitators for an effective committee included leadership commitment, educated and trained committee members, committed members themselves, and communication and transparency, and particularly mentioned was that, um, that committee members wouldn't be concerned about reprisals to report issues or concerns. And this just represents the various characteristics of what we asked about a gold standard committee. Um, you can see there are a variety of things, approachable, representative, they communicate well, they're committed to their task, they're supported by the organization, they make recommendations, they have education and training, they have a clear mandate and objectives, they comply with their legislative requirements, they're a voice for workers' concerns, and they're visible and they provide leadership. So with that, we said, okay, where are we going next? And um, from a ministry perspective, um, the ministry, um, following the Dean report, um, again put renewed focus on the Joint Committee um, and was, a, was looking at awareness and further training occupational health and safety broadly and certainly Joint Committees were part of that. So that was going on kind of in the, in the ministry world. Um, but one of the things we were interested in was an evaluation tool and again an Annalise a systematic review um, this was one of the things which was mentioned. So that leads us to our most recent study. Um, Catherine was the PI of the study. Um, so Linda was involved, and there you can see most of the uh, investigators as we were having one of our uh, uh, meetings. Um, so lots of um, individuals involved. It was funded by the Ministry of Labor. We also had an advisory committee that was made up of representatives from OPSU, from the Ministry of Labor, the Public Services Health and Safety Association and the Ontario Hospital Association. So as we went through um, the project, we checked in with that group, we got their feedback um, as on our various steps. So as I say, it was a ministry-sponsored project to develop a tool that would really, um, so let me go back a step. So what has happened with tools to assess internal responsibility system and joint health and safety committees? Um, a number of years ago, the ministry sponsored a project in the mining sector and created an audit tool. It was focused more broadly on the internal responsibility system, but there were some questions related to joint committees on that tool. Several of the health and safety associations had developed audit tools. 
Um, they tended to be, again, more focused on their form and function, so kind of the legal requirements. Do you meet? Do you keep minutes? Um, so fairly concrete uh, items. And then there was obviously the work being done at the IWH, the ben Benchmarking Leading Organizational Indicator Study. So there was certainly activity going on around audit tools. Um, but we felt there was potentially a need for something a bit more. So the objective of the study was to create and pilot test an assessment tool to evaluate effectiveness of a hospital joint health and safety committee. It was designed to be a self-assessment measure and it was structured similar to an audit and feedback type tool. So the purpose of the tool was to provide feedback on current committee processes and outcomes, so allow them to reflect on their processes and what happened. To lead the committee to develop a plan of action to reach whatever their goals and objectives were. It was also designed to enhance communication and consensus within the committee and promote discussion and reflective on the objection, objectives and activities of the gold standard committee. So we used the safety element method, and Linda was very helpful in, in this part of the study. So this just is a screenshot of two of the questions on the tool. And so I'll just kind of take you through them. So the idea is you have an area of interest. So the first one is joint member identification. And basically you describe a state from really in effect not being there at all to your ideal state. So you have narrative statements, and the individual or the group decide on where they are in that spectrum. So for instance, on joint member identification, there is no list of committee members readily available in the workplace. So that would clearly be a really problematic state to be in. A list of committee members is readily available, but it's not publicly posted. And all the way through to um, the more ideal state, the list of names, they're posted in more than one location, and changes are updated promptly and regularly. So for each of the items, there would be that series of five statements, and the individual would rate where they thought their committee was in that range. So first of all, we wanted um, just to see how usable this tool was going to be and whether it was feasible. Um, so we did a think aloud um, cognitive interviews around the content validity, readability, and comprehension of the tool. And then part two was a usability, um, really, assessment um, and observation of how the tool was actually used. So this was done, um, our aim was to do four to six hospital joint committees. We ended up doing five. So what would happen is each member of the committee before the committee meeting would use the tool and would personally evaluate each of the items themselves. They also completed a brief usability survey. They then attended the Joint Health and Safety Committee, and the committee together went through the tool and hopefully came to consensus about the rating for each of the items. Researchers from the team, usually at least two, were there. They actually observed the meeting, so how are things going, and recorded the meeting. So we actually had not only kind of the evaluation of the committee, but we also actually um, had a lot of information about how the meeting actually went. And then after the meeting, the individuals were again asked to them by themselves go through the tool and reevaluate the items. And again, completed a short usability questionnaire. So individual, group, back to individual. So the observations um, that we were particularly interested in was how long did it take to do this? So if it's going to take a committee three meetings to go through the tool, this probably isn't going to be very efficient and effective, and it's probably not going to be done very often. So it was important to know, kind of, could this be done in a manageable <coughs> period of time? How long did it take to reach consensus? So they had you know, 21 items in the end to actually reach consensus on. So again, if it was going to take them 20 or 30 minutes to kind of go back and forth and say, OK, this is where we all finally agree how we rate it, that was going to be problematic. So um, the actual observation was important in looking at that. Were they able to identify their top three priorities? What, what were they? 
And then we were also interested in, in how individual ratings changed. And there was some observation of that as the conversation happened around the committee table. You could tell that people were learning things that they didn't know beforehand. And when I show you the actual results, you'll see that for some of the items, there was a clear change in people's understanding. And then the usability surveys um, were basically to look at the ease of understanding, link value, and relevance. Um, of the tool. So these are the 10 areas um, of content, so approachability, representation, so whether management um, worker members present, the perceived commitment of committee members, communications with the workforce. So one of the things where I think there's a lot of um, maybe lack of clarity is kind of what's the committee's role in communication around health and safety? Is it the prime communicator of kind of all health and safety things? What is that role? So that was a communication piece. The support and resources that the committee had available. Uh, formal written recommendations. The education and training the committee received. The mandate and objectives of the committee their activities, and then visibility and leadership going back to that kind of fundamental um, strand of concern. So the cognitive interviews, that kind of first um, look at how it might be, we had seven uh, joint committee members participate. Um, the interviews took 45 to 60 minutes. Most of their comments related to formatting, so how did it actually visually look in the language. So we used lots of acronyms, not surprisingly. They were all taken out because if people didn't know what internal responsibility was, kind of as you were talking to them, they certainly weren't going to know what IRS was. Um, words were simplified. And in a number of questions, as we'd originally constructed it, we actually had two quite different pieces to evaluate in each item. And that's a problem because they might be OK with one of the parts but not the other. So again, we tried to um, make them much more one element questions. And so the tool was modified and then tested, as I say, in five uh, hospital joint health and safety committees. And so the committees were um, asked if they were willing to participate. The individual members consented. So in the end, we had 42 members from these five committees that actually participated in the committee assessment. Usability response, um, we had a um, fairly good um, view about its usability, 85 and 80 percent. And we had um, a reasonable number of paired analysis as well. So feasibility testing, the time to complete the tool was less than an hour. The mean was 40 minutes. The range was 32 to 45 minutes. Committees were able to come to consensus on 95% of the items. So that's actually very good. There were 21 items, um, five committees. So they did well in actually coming to consensus. The time to reach consensus was between five seconds. So some of them were so incredibly obvious. Everybody rated it the same, and they moved on to the next one. And um, was up to six, just over six minutes um, for each item. The items that were most challenging for them were the availability of experts, which is kind of interesting because you'd think it would be fairly obvious were experts available. Um, items around investigations of critical injury and fatalities. And part of that was a number of organizations hadn't had critical injuries and fatalities. So in a sense, they'd never experienced it. So it was hard for them to think about. And also work refusals. They were able to agree on their top three priorities. So it was interesting because I think committees tended to kind of, this is what we need to do, so they were doing it. But the notion that they actually every year would sit down and think through what are our plans for this year, are there things we really want to do, um, hadn't happened in a number of them. So it was in for, interesting for them to actually say, OK, in this coming year, what should we focus on? And the th top three priorities that tended to bubble up was education for the committee and communication and just developing a strategy, like what are we trying to do? So here are the items that scored both the highest and the lowest. So the highest scores were availability of experts. So although it took them a, like a, a bit to actually get to that, in the end they decided that they actually had uh, expertise available. Um, there was agreement around um, how the employer addressed their recommendations. And there was good agreement around 
um, member identification, their terms of reference, and meeting agendas. So those are things that they came, doesn't say they rated them high, it meant that they actually were very, they came to consensus very easily around those items. Um, and low, annual committee training in addition to certification training, strategies, and workers' knowledge of the Joint Health and Safety Committee and perceptions of the members as effective leaders for OHS. So this is a very busy, detailed slide. So these represent the individual pre and post ratings of the various items by the individuals. And what I've outlined in yellow are the three items where there was a significant change in the individual's rating from their pre-meeting rating to their post-meeting rating, which one could infer meant that the discussion they had at the committee provided them with more information which changed their understanding and therefore their view of how the rating was. So um, I'll go through the three where, as I say, there was a significant difference. And in all cases, the ratings decreased. So people had made assumption that things were happening or that things were working, that when they actually talked about them, they discovered it maybe wasn't quite as good as they had thought. So the Joint Health and Safety communicates OHS information to employees. So that decreased from, and so these ratings are between 1 and 5. So it went from 3.73 down to 3. So when they actually talked amongst each other, they realized that although they thought they were actually communicating reasonably well, they actually discovered that maybe they weren't um, communicating on behalf of the committee as effectively or as much as they thought. An item where there was a dramatic decrease was time to prepare for and attend joint meetings and carry out committee activities. So you can see that as they started, the rating was 4.23, so actually a very high rating. But after the discussion, it went down to 2.86. And again, because we were there, as I say, we actually observed the committee meetings, what was very interesting was as workers, particularly the worker members, actually talked about and even the management members talked about their struggles in finding time to prepare because, again, they are supposed to have a period of protected time to prepare for meetings. So it wasn't happening. And I think a number of people were actually really amazed at how a number of their, co their co-committee members weren't provided with time, really struggled to have time. So that was an item which, as I say, the, the discussion around the table clearly was useful in people understanding much better what was going on. And the other item w where there was a decrease, again, in rating was annual strategies to raise the Joint Health and Safety Committee profile. So again, I think, you know, initially they thought, oh, well, we're probably pretty good at that. But when they actually had the conversation about it and said, like, what are we doing? Do we really have a plan and strategies to do this? They realized, in fact, that they didn't. So again, I think it's interesting, and it demonstrates how when they actually sit down and discuss these items, um, it does improve their understanding. Then, yep. Go back. Yep. Did anything go up? Sorry. Nothing went up significantly. Um, and I think just kind of in quickly eyeballing them, you can see most of them um, went down, probably. So there was a bit of variation. Um, so as I said, I, th I think the discussion was interesting and things that they had assumed when they actually talked with each other they discovered maybe some of these things weren't happening or they hadn't really thought about them that much and again when you had that more detailed discussion and they actually understood what exactly was meant by some of these things um, so these are the usability scores and so this was, again, they, remember they did the usability survey when they did the pre-assessment and then after. And again, none of these scores were significantly different pre and post. Um, and again, some of them go up, some of them go down. So the usability was pretty consistent um, across uh, their various times. So in conclusion, the final tool um, is an eight-page, 21-item tool, so it's fairly long. Um, we, did, we, I think, f felt that it was feasible to use during a regular Joint Health and Safety Committee meeting, because if you had to hold a separate meeting to do this, and it was going to take, as I say, hours and hours, that was going to be a problem in its use. And the participants generally felt that the tool was of value in assessing and proving Joint Health and Safety Committee functioning. 
Uh, we're going to be sharing this at Partners in Prevention, which is coming up next week. And our next steps. So the tool is available on our website. Um, we are in the process of creating an electronic version that will actually have links to the actual legislative requirements. So a number of the items in the tool um, are really le legislative requirements. So we'll actually have a link that takes you back to the legislation. So the committee members, as they're going through it, if they want to say, what's the law actually say, they'll be able to go and do that. Um, and we're interested in testing it further and um, the two sectors we're looking at so we're interested in looking at it further in healthcare, and we're also we've had some interest from the educational sector so that's the other group that we're we're working with so I've done very well time wise mm -hmm. that's the end so we've got lots of time for questions or discussion thank you Let me, uh